Hey Star Trek fans, Dan Gunther here with a ton of new Star Trek news thanks to the San Diego Comic Con held this past weekend. Let's not waste any more time and get right into the news we learned this week in Trek. I promised the Federation News Service a first-hand account of the battle. You'll get it. The big Star Trek panel was held in the famed Hall H at the San Diego Comic-Con on Saturday, featuring presentations and Q&A for each of the Paramount Plus Star Trek projects currently in production. Strange New Worlds, Lower Decks, Starfleet Academy, Section 31, and a newly announced, as yet, unnamed project. Let's start with Strange New Worlds. The panel featured a first look clip from the upcoming third season of Strange New Worlds, and it seems to be the latest in a yearly tradition of Let's Mess With Spock episodes. In this one, we see Pike, Uhura, Noonien Singh, and Chapel all turned into Vulcans, thanks to a Kirkovian serum, a callback to the alien species who turned Spock into a human last season. I'll have a link to the full five minute clip in the video description. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out. It is one of the more weird things we've seen out of Strange New Worlds, which is saying a lot. And I'm still not 100% sure how I feel about it. The cast definitely has fun with it, and I especially love Carol Kane as Pelia here. I'm certainly curious to see it within the context of the actual episode it's from. Another announcement for the upcoming third season is the addition of the character of Dr. Roger Corby. You may remember the character from the TOS episode What Are Little Girls Made Of, where he appeared in android form, spoiler alert for an almost 60-year-old episode, and he was said to be the long-lost fiancé of Christine Chapel. We will likely see the beginning of that relationship in the coming season, as we learned last season that Chapel was accepted into a fellowship with Dr. Corby. The Strange New Worlds version of him will be played by Irish actor Killian O'Sullivan. We haven't yet gotten a release date for Strange New World's third season, but it's likely we will see it sometime in 2025. Next up, Lower Decks. Yet another Star Trek series that is sadly ending this year. The release date for the fifth and final season of Lower Decks was revealed. The season will begin on Thursday, October 24th, with two episodes dropping that day, with the remainder of season five coming out on Thursdays until the series finale on December 19th. I am incredibly sad to see this series go, as Lower Decks has been an absolute gem in the Star Trek universe. We also got to see a teaser trailer for season five, featuring a fun homage to the first teaser trailer for Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. From the teaser, we get some tried-and-true Trek tropes, such as the crew of the Cerritos from a different quantum reality, featuring Captain Becky Freeman, an alternate version of Mariner. We also see Tendi dealing with Orions and also back with her Starfleet pals, so we know that the storyline with her sister does get resolved at some point. We were also given these three preview images, this one from episode one, this one is from episode two, and this one is from, you guessed it, episode three. Again, I am absolutely gutted that the series is coming to an end, but I'm sure we're in for a wild ride with season five. The next panel featured Starfleet Academy, the newest live-action Trek series. The show hasn't gone into production yet, so there is no footage or trailers to show, but there were still some huge reveals for this show, which is really starting to look like something to pay attention to. The first big announcement is that Robert Picardo will be joining the show as a series regular, reprising his role as the holographic Doctor. This is definitely a surprising announcement, and one that was met with great enthusiasm by the Trek fan community. Given that Academy takes place in the 32nd century, I'm curious if he is playing the original EMH as seen in Voyager and, more recently, Prodigy, or the EMH backup module, who we know is alive and well at this point in history, having survived on the Vascan homeworld in the Delta Quadrant, and last seen in the Voyager episode Living Witness, where we are told he is making his way back to the Alpha Quadrant. Joining Picardo will be another character who isn't really much of a surprise. Mary Wiseman has now been officially announced to be reprising her character of Sylvia Tilly in Starfleet Academy. The next two announcements were also very welcome and a little bit more surprising. Two more Discovery alumni will be joining Starfleet Academy's cast. Tig Notaro as Jet Reno and Oded Fair as Admiral Vance. I love both of these characters and I'm thrilled we'll be seeing more of them in Academy. Vance, I suppose, isn't so much of a surprise. It makes sense that he would still be uh, high up 
fleet admiral at the time. But the announcement that Tignataro's Jet Reno would still be a part of the show, uh, that had me very happy. I love Tignataro. I love Jet Reno. My only complaint is that she didn't show up in Discovery enough. So the more Jet Reno, the better. So with these announcements, along with Gina Yasher joining on as an Academy instructor, it seems that the cast of Starfleet Academy is filling out quite nicely. I look forward to more news about this series as it goes into production later this summer. Next up, the streaming film Star Trek Section 31, starring Michelle Yeoh. The panel gave us a teaser trailer for the upcoming Section 31 film, featuring some impressive visuals and character moments assembled in a way that honestly looks like nothing Star Trek has done before. Think Guardians of the Galaxy with maybe a bit of Suicide Squad thrown in. The centerpiece of the teaser seems to be a sequence at a nightclub, along with flashbacks to a young Philippa Georgiou, played by Miku Martineau, seizing power in the Terran Empire. A number of cast members are featured, including Casey Roll as a young Rachel Garrett, the character who would eventually become the captain of the Enterprise C, Omari Hardwick. Sven Rygrock as a Vulcan, Humberly Gonzalez as a Delton, Robert Kaczynski as a humanoid who seems to have been enhanced with what looks to be cybernetic technology, and Sam Richardson, who is reportedly playing a Comaloid, a species of shapeshifter that we first saw in Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country in the form of Martia, played by Iman. The trailer says that Section 31 is coming next year, but with no definite release date. We'll likely get much more information as we get closer to 2025, and I'll be here to bring that to all of you. That wasn't the end of the announcements at the SDCC panel, however. In a surprise reveal, it seems that another new Star Trek series is currently in development. This is not your typical Star Trek series, however, which I suppose is to be expected from the studio that brought us shows like Lower Decks and Prodigy. This new series does not yet have a publicly revealed title, but it is currently being developed by Justin Simeon, writer-director of Dear White People, and Star Trek's own Tawny Newsom. Alex Kurtzman, the head of Star Trek on television, describes it as Star Trek's first live-action comedy. The official logline of the series offers some cryptic clues about what to expect. Federation outsiders serving a gleaming resort planet find out their day-to-day -day exploits are being broadcast to the entire quadrant. The Hollywood Reporter has stated that the show has, quote, workplace comedy tones, comparing it to shows such as Parks and Recreation or The Office, Perhaps resort workers on Risa or something like that? About the only other thing we concretely know about the series is that it is set in the 25th century, post-Star Trek Picard era, so the possibility for legacy characters to appear seems like a good one. This announcement has definitely piqued my curiosity. We'll bring you any more news on this new series as we learn it. Now, the big Hall H panel wasn't the only Star Trek panel at San Diego. Star Trek Prodigy got its chance to shine with its own panel on Sunday morning. As far as announcements go, we didn't get a shocking third season pickup on Netflix, but to be fair, that was never really in the cards at this year's SDCC. Let's hope the viewing numbers do justify it in the future, though. I really hope all of you are doing your part and watching the series as often as possible. What we did get, however, was the announcement that, as of July 29th, Season 2 of Star Trek Prodigy is available on digital demand. In addition, the Blu-ray and DVD release of Season 2 will be released on November 12th. This is great news for fans of Star Trek Prodigy, and I can assure you that as soon as it is available for pre-order, I will be reserving my own copy. Also at the San Diego Comic-Con, Star Trek comic publisher IDW made a couple of announcements of interest to fans. First, their license with Paramount has been extended. The partnership between IDW and Paramount Global has been officially extended to, quote, continue their mission of exploring the vast and imaginative Star Trek universe in the comic book medium. IDW has published nearly 500 issues of Star Trek comics, with their landmark number 500 coming in September of this year. The other Trek comic announcement from IDW is for a new ongoing series based on Star Trek Lower Decks. The new series will debut on November 13th, written by Ryan North. North had this to say about the new ongoing series. Lower Decks is my favorite Star Trek, and I have seen every single Star Trek there is to see, except for one episode I will never reveal. This raises the obvious question. Will something in this comic contradict something that I missed in that one episode I never saw? Thankfully, the answer is no, because the entire Lower Decks team, both at IDW and Paramount, has been so amazing. 
supportive, clever, brilliant. We're making a big, funny, heartfelt book with huge sci-fi ideas, important character developments, tons of that Star Trek flavor, and a bunch of jokes, too. If you love Lower Decks, you'll love this comic. I wonder which episode he's never seen. Anyway, the series will feature episodic stories, with each story illustrated by a different artist. Volume 1 will be illustrated by Derek Charm, whose work with North on Day of Blood, Shax's Best Day, was nominated for an Eisner Award. I'm really looking forward to this new series, and I can't wait to see the adventures of the crew of the Cerritos continue in comic form even after their television series ends. Oh, very clever, Worf. Eat any good books lately? There are a pair of Star Trek book releases this week that fans might want to keep an eye out for. First up is a new non-fiction hardcover, Star Trek, Discovering the TV Series, the Original Series, the Animated Series, and the Next Generation by Tom Selinsky. Here's the back cover blurb from White Owl Press. How well do you know Star Trek? Lifelong science fiction fan, podcaster, and author Tom Selinsky decided that the answer was not well enough, and so at the beginning of 2022, he embarked on a two-year mission to watch everything from the start of the original series to the end of Enterprise, at the rate of one episode per day. This book is the first part of that odyssey, covering the 79 television episodes which started it all, the animated series which briefly brought it back in the 1970s, the first six original movies, and the full run of The Next Generation. As well as having fun saluting the show's triumphs, cringing at its lapses in taste, and admiring its willingness to swing for the fences, there's lots of fascinating behind-the-scenes information here. Why were salt cellars unchanged in the 23rd century? Was Gene Roddenberry really not allowed to show a woman's belly button? How many characters get killed during the run of the animated series? Who actually wrote the script for Wrath of Khan? How did Paramount get Next Generation on the air when no network would touch it? But you'll also get the benefit of a complete overview of this landmark series, watching it unfold and familiar elements appear, often much later than you think. When's the first mention of the Federation? Of Kirk's time being in the 23rd century? Of there being no money in the future? And some elements appear earlier than you might think. Which episode is the first to feature a holodeck? Whether you're a diehard fan, a casual viewer, or just someone interested in the history of television, you'll adore coming on this daily journey through the highs and lows of one of the most significant and much-loved media properties in the world. Also out this week is Star Trek The Illustrated Oral History, the original cast from Titan Books. This hardcover is published by the creators of the official Star Trek magazine and collects interviews from the cast of Star Trek the original series. Here's the publisher's description. The story of Star Trek as told by the people who know it best. William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, DeForest Kelly, and the cast and crew. This lavishly illustrated oral history of the Star Trek phenomenon covers the exploits of the original crew across three seasons of live-action television, two seasons of animated adventures, and the six movies. Featuring interview material with all seven regular cast members, William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, DeForest Kelly, James Doohan, George Takei, Walter Koenig, and Nichelle Nichols. This volume also collects contributions from guest stars, writers, and directors. Both books are out in hardcover on Tuesday, July 30th. As always, I have purchasing links to Amazon in the video description below. And finally, this coming weekend sees the annual huge Star Trek party that is Creation Entertainment's STLV, Trek to Vegas Convention. The full schedule for the convention has been released, including panels, parties, special events, and photo ops for the nearly 200 special guests. Check out the link in the description to Creation's website for full details. I unfortunately will not be making it to STLV this year, but to everyone going, I wish you a fabulous time. It's all was so much fun and I truly wish I could be there again this year. And that's it for a very full week in Trek. Thanks of course to the Patreon supporters of the channel. You are very much appreciated. Join me again next week when I bring you a roundup of the week's Trek news as well as any big happenings from STLV. And if you're a fan of Star Trek Prodigy, make sure to join me and Brandy Jackla live on Saturdays in the Unready Room as we discuss Season 2. This week, Episodes 9 and 10, The Two-Parter, The Devourer of All Things. Have a great week, and live long and prosper.